Oh, there's on pause. We're doing well. <laughs> I mean, yes, you're right. It is on pause. Question is, what are we making out of this pause? Yeah. So, so did you, uh, you like today's show title? Yes, I did. I one, like, one of the that's very creative. Classic. What was that? I guess early '90s, right? Total yep. Recall, not the new one. I haven't seen the new one yet. Heard you, you Heidi heard it sucked. Uh, there we go. Now we're Siskel and Ebert. Uh, yep. we, give it, we give it two ninjas down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was kind of appropriate. You know, it's uh, we've got a lot of things brewing, but everything's dormant. Yes. You know? It's uh, even for those that can open right now, it's uh, time to start putting stuff into place. We've been reactionary for very long. And it's kind of what John and I were talking about a little bit just before we started the broadcast. Is that we've been yeah. reactionary. And I mean, time to that up. Uh, a lot of times we think, you know, you know, based on reaction, we think it's like, yeah, you know, let's go. And then you're like, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You know, it's not like just unlock that door, walk in the studio, and everything is just super back to normal. Yeah. I mean, it worked in the movie. I mean, if you guys aren't old enough to have seen that movie back then, basically what happens is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is this guy. It turns out he's like some secret agent, but he doesn't know it for half the movie. And bottom line is there's a colony on Mars owned by government and corporations, which are really blended together. And they're holding business hostage because of they control the oxygen. Some mutant tells Schwarzenegger's character to go start this alien reactor. And then within minutes, the whole entire planet is flooded with oxygen. Business restarts and everybody's happy. Um, unfortunately, I think he shoots this, the girl instead of getting the girl, but he gets the other girl. So it all works out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he got the girl or a girl <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's how those yeah. 90s movies were right they're completely misogynistic and the success yes. is based on whether you got the girl or not <laughs> um but I, I think it was um you know as i was thinking about today's show uh and good morning everybody i see you guys popping on here as i was thinking about today's show that was one of the things that came to mind was the the character quato saying start the reactor yeah. You know, and then everything is good. But there were a lot of fights that he had to go through to get to the reactor and actually start it. Um, one of the first things he had to get past was his own mindset, his own belief in who he was, what he was capable of, and what the possible outcomes were. And we all know how important mindset is in our business. Consider that a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> That's when he shoots shoots what he thought was his wife at the time. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, part. It was a, Sharon Stone. Yeah, we, we broke yep. all of our hearts back in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was. <laughs> uh, you know, so it, it really that. struck a chord with me that we're in a similar position where, you know, cash. Gary V says cash is oxygen to a business, and you know when I read that quote from him a couple of years back. It was actually one of the, one of the things that helped me get past that starving artist mentality of well, martial arts, you're not supposed to do this, and you're not supposed to charge money. And his explanation that cash was oxygen to a business just made me go like, oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. It was for me. This is not necessarily poignant for everybody. So we're in this point where, you know, and, and I don't want to get into conspiracy theory or politics, but because of regulation. Many of us are starving for cash, just like in the movie. So here's our chance to start the reactor. Some of you are looking at opening very soon. Uh, John says Friday you guys are able to open, right? This Friday, right? Able. Able, yeah. So we'll get into that. Yes. <laughs> um, I know some other places I saw Troy and Tony are able to open on May 4th. Yep. Uh, New York is able to open in 2027 sometime. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you may or may not hey, be in hey, the position. Michael, just move down to Georgia. I got Charles back. Let's go. Look, right. look, man, I'm already picking out locations across the country. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Um, but, you know, whether whether you're 
imminently able to open uh, and keyword able to, um, or you're still kind of in the, the unknown, like we are in New York. I know many parts of Europe are also kind of looking at long term, um, even if it's a phased reopening, there, there's a lot of unknown there. We've gotten past that point where we should be reactionary. And we talked about last week, um, you know, that difference between, hey, we've been tactical for so long. Let's start becoming strategic again. Now it's time to start implementing these strategies and really fine tuning them because come Friday, John needs to have a plan. Come, let's see, what are we closed until right now? I think it's May, May 15th. 15th. May yes. 15th is our date so far. Yeah, sorry, John, I'm not, as much as I love the warm weather there, in Canada, they're getting like two grand a month there just for being citizens. So I'm, I'm moving up there. <laughs> um, it's Canadian dollar, Michael. That is true. So it's Canadian dollar. So you're looking at roughly at, I believe, fifth, off the top of my head, fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, I thought you were going to say fourteen to fifteen dollars. No, no. <laughs> I think it, the American dollar is the Canadian dollar is almost seventy five percent of the. Yeah. American dollar. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the, the, the point is, guys, we need to start being really thoughtful about what are the next steps we're taking. Hopefully after last week's show, you kind of took some time and built a strategy. Now it's time to start thinking about implementation of this strategy using the assumptions that John will be able to open on May 4th. I will be able to open on May 15th, which I'm really, my intuition says June 1st. So that's what we're kind of planning for. I'm going for my birthday. Going, Heidi's going for her birthday for us to be able to reopen. There are many considerations beyond, are you able to open? Correct. You know, and, and it, it, it encompasses your staff, your marketing, your members, your community, and of course, any government regulations that they put in place. You, you know, you said something about marketing and the uh, other day. It's not really free money. They have like a 50% tax rate. <laughs> so it balances out. Um, everybody, like uh, some of the people that I was coaching and stuff like that, they were like, you know, so, you know, did you drop your marketing at all? I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm spending more money on marketing now than I did when I was actually running the studio. And they're like, huh? I was like, yeah, this is the time when you really want to market the heck out of yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean, you don't, you don't go, oh, I'm broke and I don't have it. No, ask yourself this question. Okay, I'm broke. How do I need to spend my money? So I'm actually, um, and I'm not sure how it happened. So I have to send an email today, but somehow I got enrolled in uh, one of Paul Halmy's co courses. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm not stealing something by accident. So I'm going to send him an email after we're done here, but he actually sent out an email saying, um, that right now is some of the cheapest marketing that you can get. Um, though you should not necessarily be marketing for sales. That said, I'm sure, you know, knowing how Paul and Alan and the team over there work, I'm sure they are getting sales. Um, you know, but right now he says he's doing a lot of brand awareness and that's about what we're doing as well. You know, I'm doing far more advertising, my free challenges, uh, the behind the scenes photos, um, blog posts, I'm, I'm boosting stuff like that far more than here's some sales. Yep. Though I do have sales pieces out there. Don't get me wrong, but it's so and cheap right now to get your name out. It is. It is. Uh, in case you guys don't know, um, and by the way, I don't work for Chris, nor do I get any commission from Chris Rodriguez. Just, you know, you guys know how Michael and I feel about Chris. Um, Chris has been doing our um, advertising for the last two months, right? And it's been going great. It's been going amazing. Um, now, I'll tell you yeah, this, for, for you guys that are pre skills members, I think you guys have access to her through Maya as well. You know, yes. Chris is a brilliant woman. Look up with her. Yep. Um, and, you know, everybody goes, well, you know, how many people did you sign up? 
well, you know, I signed up a third of them. Okay. And I didn't sign up a third of them because I didn't, I didn't, the others didn't sign up. No, um, this is the time when I need to be methodical and who's coming in the door. Virtually, I don't know them in person. Virtually, I don't know their, their, yeah. um, you know, uh, what's the word, their vibe, for a lack of better words. So, you know, when we're signing people up virtually, I'm very careful based on um, that initial conversation, based on the questions those parents asked, based on our chat virtually. Some of the questions that I ask, you know, when they answer me, you know, do I want that? Um, are they the right clients or not? Sure. And in fact, uh, in the skills group, uh, I think it was last night or whatever, Brandon posted the uh, the meme about, you know, people that pay more versus pay less and yeah. so on. And it, it sparked a nice discussion. You know, it's really easy right now to get leads, to get even people to sign up if you're doing virtual classes. We have to make sure that we are thinking marathon game though. You know, I mean, yeah, even my business is struggling a little bit right now, but I don't wanna just pack it full of people that are just giving me some money if they're not the right people and it's gonna make my job harder. And then let's say May 15th is the date and I reopen and my school crashes because I had it full of the wrong people. You know, so now even more, I'm being careful about who we allow into our school, um, you know, and how I market and which leads I'm really pursuing. It's not yeah. Sam turning people away, but I'm just being very mindful about it. Um, and, and same thing, you know, as we move forward, you also have to be very mindful about, you know, this is a chance to kind of recreate your schools. We've all had drop-offs, even the best of us have had drop-offs. You have to understand that some of those people that left immediately were not yet engaged in your school. So those will be people I re-pursue and, and try to get back in. Some people were simply not a good fit for your school. And as soon as the stress hit, they crumbled off the edges. Yeah. Now, if they want to come back, absolutely, I'll accept them back. But I won't pursue those people quite as hard. Instead, I will seek to refill those positions with people who are more in alignment with what we do. Um, so, yeah, Chris can get us lots of leads. Alan and the team can get us lots of leads. Heck, John and I can help you get lots of leads. We want to make sure that you are thinking what's best for your school long term marathon game. And you know who has that really nailed down is uh, Dan with Fit Kids with the Frankie Fit. So he's not doing any sales right now. And in fact, he's choosing to not even do very much online training because it doesn't fit his model. You know, his whole thing is he's a skill school, but he's using it in a fitness industry. So to him, it's let me hide exercise in social and emotional and intellectual development. It doesn't really yeah. work for him, but he has the Frankie fit um, mascot. He's got, hundreds if not thousands of leads of people that are and we came up with this phrase fanboy in a box he's going there mm -hmm. dropping off stuff where it's they have now um you know little wristbands and stickers and posters now they're getting postcards from frankie fit frankie fit has his own facebook page frankie fit has the possibility of now doing like those santa claus calls where you call up and it says hi bobby this is frankie fit uh but it's a recorded message He's not making any money off of that right now, but I guarantee in a couple of weeks when we reopen, Frankie Fit's going to have a following who are all coming into the class. Absolutely. So Nathan says, would you say this is a great time to educate your community? I would say yes all the time. Um, but I think this is an even better time because, and you have to do it tactfully because people still are overwhelmed. Not everybody is forward thinking entrepreneur mindset. Um, but this is a time when all that education of how you can help them help themselves is going to breed a lot of uh, goodwill towards your business. So then a couple weeks when you want to reopen, you know, then you can leverage that, that, that feel goodness. Yep. Now I said, want to reopen. Right. So, John, yep. you can reopen on May 4th. 
and no, Friday. actually uh, Friday. I'm sorry. May, yeah. Friday, the 20, uh, April 24th, April 20th. Right. So you yes. can open on Friday. Um, now, if you don't mind me digging a little bit into your, your business, uh, and you could totally tell me to go, you know, take a walk. Do you mind sharing your plans for what's going to happen on, on Friday in, in a general sense? Dude, go take a walk. I'm just kidding. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, um, Friday's just going to be another day like today. Saturday and Sunday is going to be another day like today. Um, possibly next week, it may be another day like today. Um, it, 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 if you guys know me well and like know me by now, I don't jump into things just because, you know, oh, it's happening. Let's do it. There's certain things that I'll jump on, right? Like, um, finding a good company that will sell hand sanitizers. That's something I would jump on, right? This one, no. Um, the governor came and let us all know on Monday that we can open on Friday the 24th, right? Um, I sent you and Melody a message and it was like, yay, right? And then you sit back and you think, okay, they shut us down super fast, okay? But we have a lot of rules and regulations that we need to follow to open back up. So it's not going to be like open doors, the flock comes in. No, we still have to have, you know, 10 students per within the building or within your room. Like, you know, for us, I can literally fudge it and go with, you know, I've got four rooms, which means I can actually have 40 students each one of those rooms have their own entryway, correct? You've been there. Mm -hmm. So I can easily do that. But then I'm like, wait a minute. That means I have to have four instructors. That means I have to do this. That means I have to do that. What's the expense going to be behind all that for me to open? Plus, you'd probably have to shift your schedule around so that none of those classes released at the same time so you didn't have more than 10 kids in your, your lobby. It's a, yes. lot of, it's a lot of variables. I mean, when... A, a month or two ago when they said shut down, there was one rule to follow. Shut, <laughs> shut down. down. <laughs> you know? Now there, there is going to be time when, when um, you're mindfully going to have to make sure, like run through that checklist. Are yes. we compliant with this? Is this in line with our own personal and business ethics? And, and, Absolutely. And, you know, with our own vision. Is this in line with the desires of our community because you do have to be aware of what your community wants. Um, yep. and, and I would say, you know, going back to Nathan's question about educating your community, that's when it becomes really important. So if you can open on Friday and you're not opening on Friday, why not? You know, now we all know why, but we want to also communicate that as a benefit to our audience, our audience being our current and future members. Um, you know, so if I'm not opening on Friday, hey guys, you know, the governor gave us the okay to open on Friday. However, we want to make sure that every single thing we do is in the best interest of our students. There are a lot of regulations and we want to make sure we take the time to educate ourselves and our team to make sure that even as we come back, you guys are safe and getting the best possible experience that you can. Now that just bought me two weeks to figure out what's going on in my school. You know, you, yep. you can always move the timetable up. One of the things I hate the most about New York right now is that it's always, ah, well, maybe another two weeks. Uh, maybe another two weeks. Like, dude, just tell me six months. And then if it's only two weeks, I'll be happily surprised. But just Absolutely. tell me it's going to be a long time, you know? Um so we want to make sure that, you know, you're educating step by step of the way, just like in the beginning of this, we said, look how I clean the pads. Look how I mop the floors. Same sort of thing. You know, this is what we're doing to Rio. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because everybody thinks like, you know, if I just open, you know, it's going to be an easy task. Guys, listen, if you look at the latest study, the six foot spread like that's that's the um, what's the word here? Um, that's the like at least a minimum of six foot spread, right? Like that's what they're saying, right? Keep that six foot distance. But when you look at the latest study, um, they found out that if you're coughing or sneezing, it's actually on the average of 
a 12 foot spread. Especially if you sneeze like I do. (laughs) I mean, yeah. And let's face it, um, kids, right? Let's talk, let's take the kids classes, for example, not necessarily the adults, (laughs) um, children by general, right? If they're under 15 months, under, you know, 24 months, they may be cleaner, right? They're cleaner because they're handled by their parents and all that stuff, right? But then let's go to the two, three, four, five years and older. They are germ infested. Yeah, teenagers are nasty. You, you know, and, kids have yeah. far more germs than people. I mean. So <laughs> who's to say that a kid doesn't sneeze in class? And that person is a carrier. Now, guys, I'm not bursting your bubble. I'm just bringing awareness to some of the things that we need to be mindful of when we do open. Okay. Now, again, if you do open, you're only going to do a drop off. Parents cannot be in the lobby. That's one thing you got to be thinking about. That means um, I hope to God that when you do that, you will be recording your classes on Zoom to allow others. By the way, just to let you guys know that once we got the news to um, open, I can't tell you the number of parents and the number of emails that I got. Are you still providing uh, the online classes? Because we're not going to make it in yet. So the, some of the parents are not comfortable with that decision. Mm. Okay. And, so and when you I, really, it doesn't matter what you believe about the yeah. virus. It doesn't matter if you yeah. believe it is a hoax by one party to take down the other party. It doesn't matter if you believe that it is exactly what they say it is. It only matters what your public believes. You need to yep. address their pains and their concerns with it. And you need to be mindful of how safe you're going to be. You're going to have to wear gloves. You're going to have to wear masks. You want to make sure that the kids that walk in the door are also wearing masks. But you know what else? You need to set time aside that after every class, you're also mopping and sanitizing the mats. Like people don't think of those little things. Like, why would I need to do that? They're walking on the ground, you know? Yeah, but if, if they're coughing, if they're sneezing, if they're saying, hi, yeah, how many times have you spoke and accidentally poof, things came out of your mouth? <laughs> like th- there, is more, there is more to it than just opening the doors. Now, Michael, say we open, say we open and God forbid two, three weeks later, we find out that one of the kids that's been attending is a carrier and he has the virus. So it's actually a really good point because the whole, I think what's happened, and look, guys, I'm no scientist. You know, I went to school for massage therapy, so I get it a little bit, you know, <laughs> but I'm no scientist. Um, you know, one of the, the concepts behind all of this was not to make the virus go away. It was still that all of us were still going to get it. We just didn't want to all get it at once. So the fact that we've been quarantined for for whatever period in your area doesn't mean the virus is gone. It just yeah. means that the level of people that are going to get it now are able to receive health care. That's it. Yeah. So just because John can reopen on Friday doesn't mean the virus is gone in Georgia. You know. So well, yeah, so it's very possible that you have a carrier. Here is the funny part. The governor comes on and says, okay, guys, you know, we're going to do this, 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 and this. These are the CDC protocols that you need to do. We go to CDC, we pull it up, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, the um, numbers in Georgia has flattened. And right now we're sitting at roughly, it was something like 18,600 cases with roughly around 825 deaths. Right? An hour after he finishes his um, life, whatever, and we all give these messages that the uh, number has gone up to 19,250 19, um, and the death went up to 900. All oh, within a matter of an hour. Oops. So you're like, all that happened within a, 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 an hour. So, you know, for a minute, everybody had hope that we can open. And then with the next minute, you're like, wait a minute. The number is not flattened anymore. If the number is flattened, the cases shouldn't rise. And I know, I know, guys, it's all studies. It's all whatever. But for us, we're going to survey our parents. We're going to ask our parents, what would you like us to do? Um, How many of you will be more comfortable walking in the door? I have to think of two things. One, parents. Two, our team. Last but not least, expenses and payroll. You know what I mean? 
And I'm not saying that because of anything. It's because we're all at a point where we should be spending our money wisely. So, Michael, say we open up every single day for five, six hours, right? And we're trying to teach, and we're, we're in hopes that we will have 10 people per class. And even though if we sign up, for them to sign up, and, you know, there's a cutoff where once the class registers for 10 students, you know, um, you know, it would not allow any more, or they would sign up for that next class or whatever. How many will actually show up after they sign up, after they register? Yeah, there's, okay. there's a lot of variables. And yeah. then you're at your studio, you've got two or three employees. Are you going to pay them or you're not going to pay them? You know, so again, there, there is a lot more to it than just, hey, we got the OK to open. For sure. Sensei John says, my wife tells me all the time that when I speak, things accidentally come out of my mouth. So, you know, the, the interesting part, this is actually a one of the things, a class we took in massage school, um, you know, there, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube um, where it's just a backlit person, you know, lit from the back, but with a black background behind them, speaking, not sneezing, not coughing, just speaking, and the volume of saliva that comes out, uh, you know, you don't necessarily see it in an ambient lit room. But every time you speak, every time you make a B or a P or an S or a T, spit comes out. You, know, you don't always see it, but when you go go look on YouTube, you'll see these videos. So the things that she accidentally sees come out are noticeable. You know, you can you can dodge. <laughs> it, it, it's all the things you can't see, and yeah, that are the the ones that you have to watch out for. So yeah, it doesn't matter what you believe, it matters what your clients believe. Now, absolutely. You know, let me also play a little bit of the other side here. So yeah, we're gonna pull our parents too and we're very concerned about their opinions and their beliefs. I don't want you to think though, that you can't be a decision maker and a leader in your business. This is not to say, don't ever do anything unless your parents want it because that's no way to run a business and you will tear yourself apart trying to keep everybody happy. This yep. is one of the reasons it's so important to pack your school with people who align with your vision because then they will steer you in the direction you already wanted to go in a way that works for them, right? So you have to have that that parity of, not parity, P-R-P-A-R-O-D-Y, but I-T-Y, parity yeah. you know, in what your, your goal is. I mean, at least that way, if you do it right, instead of opening up every single day of the week to um, teach classes, you know, you can do, you know, partial Zoom days, partial live days with the Zoom um, in your studio. You know what I mean? Like for sure. Yeah. You're going to have to have like, for a period, you know, it was hard for a lot of us to close because we didn't have plans for that in place. Right. Who knew mm -hmm. that one day within a, a Three week period, the world would stop. Nobody planned for that, um, as evidenced by all of the failures in business and government and society right now. Um, now you have the ability to plan. I would not say make a quick left, you know, and drop your Zoom classes because you hate them and get back to. You're going to have to hybridize for a while, especially if you have ten kids per class or even if it's 10 kids in your facility. I mean, we modeled our school on a lean and mean, you know, for us, 150 kids or 150 members, that's a lot, you know, and it's yep. just by design how we chose to model our school. So could I do my regular class schedule with only 10 kids in it? Maybe right now, because there's gonna be a certain inertia for people to come back, right? So maybe right now I could fit everybody into my regular schedule, but even at 150 members, it would be challenging for me to fit everybody in and still meet a mandate like that. Um, so hybridizing my classes, still running a modified schedule a little bit, um, maybe opening up Tuesday, you know, we have a half schedule on Tuesday and a half, well, Saturday is actually a pretty long day. But I mean, there's room still. If I really wanted to, I'd have to put in extra effort 
but that's yep. what sets success away from failure is extra effort. You know, it's possible, but it would make my life easier to also continue running Zoom classes or WebEx or, you know, whatever your platform of choice is. Yep. I mean, as long as you do it mindfully and allow yourself time to um, disinfect the pads, um, disinfect the floor. I mean, don't forget the mask, guys. You know, you know, as we were thinking, you know, Jeff and I were talking, we're like, you know, what about the mats? You know, everybody forgets about the mats. What so about here's the mats? one for you. Like, if you guys are closed, but still allowed to be in your school. So I'm still allowed to be in my school because most of my team is a living family unit. So we're all allowed to be together. Um, I just can't be open to the public. But we're doing behind the scenes shots every now and then of us cleaning. Nobody's here. Yeah. But... We have a system to clean, so everybody should know that my systems are keeping up, even though your child isn't here to benefit from them. And and guys, I mean, with, in a really grand sense, this whole pandemic thing has been a distraction from you taking steps towards your goals. Now, did it have to be addressed? Absolutely. But if you're not already back focusing on moving forward, you're still being distracted by that whirlwind of, you know, what's going on. So here's your homework. If you could still be in your school, take a picture of you cleaning something and just say, hey, behind the scenes, we're getting ready for class. Post it on your Facebook page, you know, and the same way that as we were ramping down into quarantine, everybody was posting like, hey, look at me disinfecting. Yeah. You should be posting that as we ramp back up out of quarantine. Hey, look, we're still keeping up. We learned a lot from this experience and we're, we're so happy to be able to provide you an even better experience because of it. Notice how it always goes yep. back to that. Everything that happens to me is so that I can provide a better experience for you. Um, you know, it, there, there's still going to be a percentage of your people that are worried and you have to show them that you've learned from this experience and that you're taking steps to keep them safe. You you have a responsibility to keep them safe. Yep. And <clears throat> just make sure that once you survey your parents, you make a good decision of how many days a week you're going to be open. You know what I mean? So if you survey your parents and 75% of your parents said, well, we're going to wait a little bit longer. Okay, then if that's the case for the next two weeks, parents, those are the days that we're open. Here's our life schedule or here's our life and Zoom schedule, whatever the case may be. And then survey the parents again two weeks later. So that way it's a gradual opening versus a hardcore opening because what you don't want to do is have more than, you know, you're, <clears throat> if you're open and all of a sudden you've got 15 kids showing up, are you going to turn them away? Yeah, so that's another good point. You know, if you're already calculating like, hey, here's my student body, here's how I'm going to lay it out. So there's only 10 kids on the floor. And for some businesses, it's 10 people. So you have to include your, sta your staff, depending on where you are. Yeah. So now I laid it all out so that everything matches and I turn on the light switch and in walks somebody to sign up. Now what? Yep. You know, it's the things that you don't think of that are going to be the things that, that you stumble on as you start to go through that reopening process. Um, so as we start looking forward, we know that we're going to have, you know, we've spoken about it before. We're going to have some sort of inertia, whether it's because of fear or laziness or executive dysfunction, whatever it is, there's going to be a certain inertia of getting your business back to normal um, or to whatever you decide to make it because we're making some changes in our business, not because of this, but because this gave us the opportunity to do so. Um, of course. So the question now becomes, we have this soft opening, we have a hybrid class schedule, we're doing all the things that we need to do how do we start talking to our community now? Because I think there's going to have to be a shift from, uh, not away from, but maybe in addition to, I think you guys should continue to provide all the content and value as much as you can that you have been. Uh, but you also now have to readjust to start recovering. You know, you need, I don't want to say bodies in the school, but you need fresh income. 
you know, we're, we're down to now probably about a 30% hit when, once we've adjusted for some of the programs that we no longer have to run, you know, some of the, um, the sublease things that we have going on. When I adjust for everything, we're at about a 30% hit. Um, so how do I recover that? You know, you, you have to start planning ahead for growth again with all of these things in mind. How are you going to discuss with a new member? This is what it's like now. We have a plan to have it be like this. Here's how we're guaranteeing that you're going to have a good transition time. Yep. Um, I think that'll come through. In and also, day. yep. Uh, um, also, don't forget that some of us may go back and actually increase our tuition a little bit to recover some of the costs. Okay, so when you do that, you got to be mindful of how you're going to do it tactfully. Um, so one of the ways um, there is this guru that I kind of follow from an entrepreneurial perspective. He said, when you go back and you reopen, not during the soft open, but during like the opening, mm. you know, send an email back out to everybody, let them know, hey, you know, I totally understand that you pulled out because of the current pandemic we're going to allow all of our former parents or former clients come in at the old rate if you sign back up over the next month you know what i mean yeah otherwise in order for us to recover our losses you may want to do this now this is just an idea it's not something it's not like a concept for you to follow you that may not be your approach that may not be something you want to do but you let them know that it's that sense of like, you know, wait a minute, if I have to pay 15 extra dollars per month or whatever, I can sign up right now. You know, let me just go back in right now. Right. So be careful how you're going to recover those things and be careful how you're going to, you can bring people in the door. Like for us, I will tell you this zoom classes is already in our business plan. I'm going to go back to life classes, but I'm going to have Zoom in the building. I'm going to have Zoom set up properly. I'm going to have Zoom pointing at the instructor and the um, the students while we're teaching on the floor because I know right now I've got people signed up who don't live close to me. I don't want to lose them. And they can easily go right down the street to Joe Schmo and train with Joe Schmo, right? Sure. sure. But at this moment, I don't want to lose them. Yeah, so, so far we have one student that's in Michigan – Michigan? Michigan, Michigan, but he's really close to uh, Bill and Lori. So when we reopen, you know, Zoom is not going to be one of our focuses. It's just what we decided. Um, yep. So we have the opportunity to now send Bill and Lori a pre-skilled student, <laughs> you know, yep. somebody who now already kind of understands the skills concept, and they can walk in and start. A pre-skilled. Pre-skilled. You're pre-qualified. It's like getting a loan. <laughs> So what about for your staff? How are you, um, you know, because like I said, most of our team, we all live together. It's our kids. So, you know, we just say, hey, get your butt out of bed, get to work by 3.30. What are you doing? Because your staff is not necessarily your family. Um, what are you doing to kind of assuage their fears to make sure that they're okay coming back? Well, so here's the thing. Um, you got to keep in mind that if you as a company provided them with unemployment insurance through the COVID, it is understood for them to come back to work for you. You know what I mean? Or to work with you. This is why you as a company provided them with that. That doesn't mean that you got them handcuffed. They can freely leave if they want to. They can go find other jobs if they want to. Right. But I look at it as a courtesy. You know what I mean? I look at it as um, loyalty. Now, some people might say, John, you're naive, really? Some people might leave. Some people say, you know what? The unemployment insurance check that I'm getting right now is a hell of a lot more than what you were paying me part-time. I get it, whatever. And if that's the case, then I also understand who's you know, blood and who's not blood, right? Like who's really loyal to you and who's not really loyal to you. So if that's the case, I'm looking at this as I'm doing a – grand reopening that is some sense that you have to be as an entrepreneur i can go back to normal or plan b i'm gonna go back and restart what jennifer and i started 20 years ago you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so yeah, by the way, guys, once we 
if you're not having or planning to have a grand reopening party, of course, you may have to be thoughtful about how you implement it. Treat this as if you are buying a brand new business, grand reopening. There should be a party yeah. of some sort, some sort of celebration that you guys are playing. And so look at it as a family reunion. Oh. You know what I mean? You're at a coffee. Dude, yeah, yeah. at a coffee. Get him some. <laughs> All right. So that was our Look at it as, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, look at it as, you know, if you don't want to call it grand reopening, call it, you know, Atlanta Skills Family Reunion. You know, yeah, and have a party. Based we do on that. a lot in Chinese martial arts because, like, even our ranks are family based. You know, if somebody is not your master, they are your father or grandfather or uncle. So, we do a lot of family reunion type stuff like that. You know, so it's something that anybody who's ever been a member of your school, anybody who's even been a friend of your school, we invite other affiliated. Uh, instructors and stuff, invite them all. You never know who you'll reactivate, you know, as a member yep. or what uh, relationship with another instructor you'll rekindle. And, you know, I get a lot of value out of speaking with other instructors. I belong to, a, you know, an organization and which is funny because you guys always hear me go, you know, why are you in an organization? Different kind of organization. Um, but, you know, I, I get so much value out of speaking with other instructors and trading ideas and even just sitting around trading war stories from, oh, you remember that tournament back in wherever? Yep. This is going to be about rekindling relationships that may help your business. They may not help your business. They may just help you and, and provide value in your own life. But, guys, invite everybody to this party. The mayor, and the stinking governor, everybody. You can even, if you feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I've got 400 students or I've got 300 students. Can I do that all at once or whatever? Break it down to age groups, break it down to the early skills, you know, family reunion, you know. Um, but again, that's totally up to you. So that is more, yes, it may be an all day Saturday event. Dude, go right, maybe over week. a few so weekends. Week of celebrate. Like, I have friends that, yeah. like, it's my birthday month and they drink all month long, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Make Jesus. It I'm not saying get the kids liquored up, but you know, you, you could make it a five or six day celebration week where the focus for classes that week is all about the reunion. So you're still meeting yep. your, your, whatever your restrictions are and you're still being, um, you know, compliant with whatever the regulations are, but you can make it so that it is a grand big event. And in fact, it might even be better that way. You might be able to magnify your impact. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I just want to make sure that, or I mean, I, I know all of you out there are fairly smart people. You know what I mean? I just want to make sure that you don't go gun hoed. You know, you don't go, you know, jump the gun and do something that will end up costing you um, a lot because all it's going to take, all it's going to take is for one parent to go out there and write a review or you know say something about how you reopened or whatever and that might plummet you especially right now you know you one of the things that i would do is while you're kind of speaking to your parents ah, that's my crutch word lately kind of while you're speaking to your parents about what they think you should do over the next few weeks listen to their objections yes to opening but here's why. If they say, don't open this week because we feel this, and a significant portion of your people tell you that, and by significant, I mean like 10%, because then there's another 50% that aren't saying what they really are thinking. You know, if a significant purpor uh, proportion of the people are saying, we have this particular fear about reopening. When you speak to them the next week, you should be able to speak to them in a way that you address that fear before it ever comes out of their mouth a second time. Same yep. way we do sales. If we get a lot of price objection, then my sales spiel changes to address price. If I get a lot of schedule objection, my sales 
pitch changes to address why we do our schedule a certain way so that people never get a chance to say, well, that schedule doesn't work because I've already told them why it needs to work. And then they go, all right, I see we're going to have to make some adjustments. It just changes their mindset. Same thing now. We're all afraid that we're going to, you know, re-spike the, the, the pandemic. Next week when I speak to them, I get to say, we've taken some precautions to make sure that we don't encourage any growth in this pandemic. You know, I get to preempt it, even though they already told me what I should be talking about. And then if next week it's because, well, you know, we want to come back, but, you know, our schedule is so crazy right now. Well, then in the third week, I get to say, hey, parents, we're opening up the next module. And because we know a lot of you have crazy schedules, this is what we've done. Now they don't get a chance to say, oh, but my schedule is too crazy. So same way we do sales. It's just internal sales. Everything is sales. You're selling them on the concept. So hit that objection before they ever make the chance to make it. And the way you find the objection is by asking them so that you can set it up for next week. I hope that makes sense. I'm running on just coffee. Too. Oh, no, absolutely. Because, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I, I, I've said this to a lot of people that have talked to me and called me. Um, we have our Zoom classes set up in a way that there is a five to 10 minute window at the end of every class that we teach where we're speaking to the parents and they have the opportunity to share things with us. So I may not be calling every single parent and talking to them on the phone privately or whatever, but I'm giving them that choice. Michael, um, Heidi, you know, thank you so much for bringing your kids to class today. Uh, I'm pretending that both of you are two separate parents and, um, if you have any questions you want to ask me right now in terms of the at-home training, in terms of the schedule, in terms of any behavior issues, in just whatever, if you just talk, you know, anything you want to bring up right now. And by the way, if there is anything you're not comfortable with to talk to me about right now, um, would you just do me a favor and shoot me a quick text and I'll give you a call right away? Okay. And that really helps them. That will, you know, I've had parents where they're just open. And, you know, some parents are just ready to go. Bleh, yeah. Right? <laughs> I didn't mean that got, much. <laughs> and exactly. And then, but I'm okay with it. Like I've learned how to take the bleh yeah. and turn it around it into something like soft. Okay. Um, and then I've got other parents that will just send me a message. All right. But, you know, and then again, like we always said, we've got those parents who found the opportunity to leave and they left. Okay. But, if you connect with your parents, if you ask them questions, if you give them, okay, if you give them the ownership of helping you open your studio or some sort of ownership or some sort of say so in terms of helping you open the studio, they're gonna realize that you care more about the community versus about the money that's coming in. Okay. Sure. I mean, it's the basics of influence. You know, if you can get them to come up with your idea as if it's their own, people don't argue with their own information. You, yep. know, you have to be really tactful about, and, and I'm not saying be unethical and convince them to do something they don't want to do, but help them get past their fears and then come around to where you wanted to go anyway so that you guys can meet them in the middle. But now you're meeting them in what they think is their middle, you know, and you let them carry you forward. Yep. Um, <clears throat> try to Google and try to look up um, a few of the uh, CDC guidelines in terms of reopening and reopening gyms. Try to follow those. Uh, make sure you stock up on hand sanitizers um, and the um, infrared uh, thermometers, the forehead check thermometers. If you can't find those, you know, people say you can buy the regular thermometer and put them under their armpits and take one or 1 1.5 degrees off you know so with this one can be a little sticky <laughs> yes you can do it under the clothes or what are you going to do you know so you know just be mindful of some of the uh, um, things that you're going to do to reopen your studio um, have a good window for them to have the kids go wash their hands before class or if you have hand sanitizers you know use it um, you can buy hand sanitizers right now as a bulk from a lot of the uh, distilleries. They can't, you know, they can't use the alcohol, 
and they've got the perfect alcohol, right? So they're selling it in bulk as um, like um, foam-based hand sanitizer. Mm. Um, yeah, and the other thing, thing that is, you know, with stuff like that, find a way to go above what the minimum requirement would be. So, you know, for example, before I stepped out of the corporate world, I was a telecom engineer for a local hospital network. And even though they were all kind of owned by the same governing body, they were all independently run. One hospital put out hand sanitizers because they were mandated to do so. The other hospital put out hand sanitizers and next to every hand sanitizer was a lotion station because they recognize that when you're coming out of a situation, right? You don't necessarily want lotion when you're going into a patient, but when you're coming out from a patient and you put the alcohol on you, it dries out your skin and cracks it. So they would yep. also give you lotion to moisturize your skin. So like little things like that, if the, the recommendation is one person every six feet, you get one person every seven feet. It's not really going to affect very much, but it just shows that you're going kind of above and beyond. Definitely don't leave all those chemicals unattended. Like don't let the, don't have the station set up in a way that the kids are just having a free for all. Yeah. Thing because, you know, you and I know a lot of you also have regulations, um, especially if you are a, a like a licensed child care type of place or licensed uh, daycare. A lot of you also have regulations about how to handle those things. Um, and I would recommend even if you're not licensed, start to look at some of those regulations. Um, yeah, it's not <clears throat> that you have to follow them, but they're there for a reason. And sometimes that reason is overkill because somebody complained or got sued about something stupid. But very often it's for good reason. And I'm a big fan of modeling my business after um, healthcare and childcare and, um, you know, learning institutions, even though I don't have to be licensed or have certain things in place, I like to do so because it shows a certain sense <clears throat> of what my business is all about. I'm not the local gym, kids hang out, play place. I am the local, you know, childhood development center using martial arts as the medium to help the, you know, the, the usual spiel. And I, and I, Yep. reinforce that by certain things that I do the, the surfaces that we have in the school the um, you know just the flow of the school I'm not regulated to do it but I chose to go above and beyond and this is an, another good opportunity to do that as regulations are put in place we want to always make sure we're going above and beyond all right how are we doing here we are coming up pretty close to the end so uh, let's do a, a quick recap so we said that we will soon be able to reopen. Some of us this week, some of us this decade. We're not sure when, but it's coming. And we wanna make sure that the things that we do are the things that we should be doing, not necessarily the things that we can be doing. Um, we wanna make sure that we have plans uh, in place for the transition time between where we are now and where we want to be, whatever that looks like for you, that you are still maintaining alignment with how you are bringing people into your school so that they are both the right people and that you know you'll have the capacity to deal with them if restrictions are put into place. Uh, we said that um, you, you want to make sure that you are having a clear vision of what you want to be. If you are taking the opportunity to recreate your business, maybe to raise rates, maybe you have to raise rates, whatever that is, have that plan in place, how you're going to get to it, and make sure you can sell every single piece of that as a benefit to your members, keeping them informed and educated as you go. Um, did I miss anything? No, sounds good. Oh, all right. And also make sure you're pushing forward. Oh, that was the other thing. Keep advertising, marketing, educating, brand awareness. You know, this is actually a good time, believe it or not. This moment may suck, but we've taken the opportunity to pay off a lot of debt from when we opened the school. We've done a lot of community interaction. So it's a good spot to be for tomorrow, if that makes sense. <laughs> you know, play yep. the long game. Yep. 
All right. So, and any uh, any wrap up words or ideas or tidbits for these people that have been spending the hour with us? I mean, I, again, I think we mentioned it all right now. I'm just gonna go and say, be very methodical on how you're gonna read. That's all. Yeah, you know, one thing I, I would still say that right now is a great time for us to have access to amazing amounts of information. You guys have seen what the skills team has put out, what Melody herself has just been, like Melody's been removed from the business for a little bit to, a, to an extent until this past month or two. And look what yep. she has brought to the industry. And it's not just her. All these other you know teams and consultants have been giving out tons of information. You've also heard us say in the past, Stop being scattered about who you listen to. And this is not only listen to us. Pick a few people who align with what you want. Listen to them and follow them. Because I, I see a few people who are like, well, this person said to do that. And that person said to do this. And this person said to do that. And you split your business into opposing directions. Yeah, and, and too much of a good thing can be troublesome as well. So just be mindful of what yeah. you implement. That doesn't mean don't listen to them. It might be good stuff to implement tomorrow once you have a good understanding of why. Um, but, but just be mindful is our word today, I think. You know, mindful about everything that we've, we've talked about. Mindful is our word. Yeah. Because if you're listening to like four different venues, right, at the same time, and you're implementing four different things at the same time, and none of those things are being finished, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. And it doesn't mean you can't have four people. Like I have a lot of people that I'm listening to, but I'm also yep. very clear about what I want in my business. So I make sure that the, if, you know, we'll use the example of four, the four people that I'm listening to, they are aligned or at least close enough yeah. aligned that I can pick and choose from what, you know, they're offering. Uh, I'm, I'm not just listening to everybody because they're giving stuff. Or, Ooh, I like this idea. Let me put it to the side for now. Let me finish up this project first before I start this project. So at least you're thinking or you're doing one thing at a time versus trying to multitask four different things or you know four different ideas. And then you're like, oh. Yeah, and I think we talked about in, that in, the, in the gold members group. You know, If you guys are, are skills members, the gold members are getting time with Melody and John and I, where even though Melody is cranking out gold information for the gold members. <laughs> She's cranking out so much information. You don't have to apply it all. Pick the one thing that's next. You know, the, the info will always be there. Pick the one thing that's next. Get it going at least 80%. Then start looking at the next thing. Just because yep. even if you're only following Melody, you don't have to then say, I have to follow everything Melody does. She's at a certain level. John and I are at a certain level. You might not be at that level yet, and it's okay. You know, pick the one thing that resonates with what your needs are, get it done, and then go to the next thing. All right, so what do we got here? Oh, the reminder's popping up. All right, guys, so whether you're opening this week or you have no idea when you're opening yet, um, if you need help with it, please reach out to John and I. Um, you know, if you need help with engaging your, your, your students while you are you know, on these Zoom classes that don't have that level of connection, reach out to Clayton. He'll do some coaching with you. He's even doing guest appearances for skills members on their Zoom calls. The team is here for you. The team is not here for ourselves. I mean, we do like to sit around and pat ourselves on the back once in a while, you know, quarterly maybe, but we're here for you guys. Um, yep. And we each have something to bring. So if you need that help, please reach out. It's what we're here for. All right, guys. So that is about our time. Uh, I encourage you to get out there and take action. Your action may yep. be my action, but pick one and take it. Guys, happy Earth Day. Oh, yeah. I will see you. I'm, I'm going to go smell a flower. I'm sitting out here smelling the flowers. I know. I'm watching you. <laughs>
our, our son is just coming out now, so I, I might get out some too. All right, guys, go get it. Peace out, everybody. Bye-bye.